one of his plays. Perhaps because Shakespeare has opened his heart to me, perhaps because my own heart is near breaking, I have been subjected to sermons and tirades from my family for days, but must hold my tongue. Whatever the reason, a polite question from Will as to the state of my own affairs unleashes a torrent in reply. In Amsterdam, I am a respectable burgher, an associate of a silk trading house noted for its fine quality. I have a wife and children who speak not a word of English. The Trejan family's preoccupations do not touch them in any way. I have my music, which fills my many leisure hours. My life is perfectly arranged. I seem to be another person living in another world. And yet, when I come here to London, I lose all my mirth. I grow weary, and my life seems stale, flat, and unprofitable. My father looms like some terrible spectre. He has only to say, remember my son, and I am lost. The trivial record of my life and business all my wisdom, knowledge, and reason are wiped from the tables of my memory, and I hear nothing but the voice of a duty alien to me. I tell myself the time itself is out of joint, and I was not born to set it right, and yet I am caught like a mouse in a trap. I feel the blood rise to my face. Shakespeare is staring at me so intently that I shudder. What is it, Master William? You consider yourself a man caught between two worlds, sir. Indeed I am, I say. We, who are not fanatics, are caught between two camps, two ways of life. We are omniscient, godlike in our apprehension. And so we cannot embrace one or the other. This will go no further, I trust. We are gentlemen, says Shakespeare. The secrets we confide and receive are not ours to divulge. How will you resolve your dilemma? I do not know yet. Doubtless I shall have to do as a gentleman of my acquaintance has done. He made his family believe he is dead and rebuilt his life in the new world. Shakespeare nods. The new world is full of people who thought themselves unable to bear the ills they suffered here, only to flee to others they knew nothing of. I have heard it said by returning travellers that in the end they would rather have not crossed the ocean at all. I sigh. I am caught in a duel with my own self, and I don't know if I am up to the fight. Master Trejan, says Shakespeare, do you know the play for which you have brought me Master Morley's arrangement? No, I don't believe he told me the title. The music is for Hamlet. Sir, says Shakespeare, I should like to ask you a great favour. No one must ever know that they came from you, but I should like to put some of your reflections this morning into Hamlet's mouth. What manner of man is he, your Hamlet? A prince, caught between the modern world of Europe and the backward-looking world of Denmark. Hamlet is torn, says Shakespeare, between love and the demands of state, between his desire for freedom and the voice of his father, calling him to order and to remember his duty. Ha! You see, says Shakespeare, it is your story, Francis, and mine. You look quite thunderstruck. Shakespeare is right. He speaks as if he has read my very soul. 